Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Friday and welcome back to another video. Cheers. So not a lot to report over here. Um, looks like we're going into another lockdown again. You know, further restrictions. So once again, incredibly boring. <laughs> so that leaves another opportunity to do, do a video here on this Friday evening, rainy Friday evening. But um, yeah, so we'll just get straight into that. This is actually a response video uh, in response to Wandering Souls web scene. Uh, that's a channel done by a guy called Mark from the Netherlands. Really like his channel. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you, you'll know that I've done the response video to one of his uh, threads before, which was Screen For Me VC. So this is actually a more recent one that he's done. And I thought, uh, Mark, great idea. Like um, really, he comes up with some fantastic ideas, some fun ideas for videos. So the topic in question for this one is show albums with bands on the front cover. So quite a simple idea, but it's a lot of fun in terms of albums I selected to show for this. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do today. I'll just explain some of the rules that Mark mentioned. He said, it can be any genre, any format. I've actually got two formats to show. One of the rules was that they ca there can't be albums with just one member on the front. It has to be the entire band. And I think that's actually good because I have a load of, whole load of albums with you know one man bands or sometimes two man bands. And I think what I'm going for here is groups. It's more sort of iconic shot because like if I included every one man band, we would be here all night and I'm sure you don't want that. So yes, that, that's one thing. Um, and the other thing is I'm also, like Mark said, you can make it as long as you like. I'm gonna try and make, keep it short. I do have a few more than five, but I don't have 35, so that's the good news. But I just handpicked and selected the ones that I thought were the best. So don't worry, I'm not gonna go through my entire collection and take out every single album with a group on it, but just the ones which I find the best or the most iconic. So I've been a bit selective with this video. Okay, so I'm gonna get straight into it in a moment. But before I do, what I'm playing in the background, this is Sargeist with Satanic Black Devotion. So incidentally, this features one member on the front, so it's not part of this competition. But I was just listening to this this morning, actually, because the weather outside was overcast and rainy, and I thought, perfect for that bleak kind of atmosphere. So if you're not aware, Sargeist are a, a black metal band from Finland, and it actually features members from Horna, I believe Shatral, maybe just him, I'm not sure. But anyway, what, if you haven't heard this band before, what you've got is very sort of a bleak, raw, black metal. Sort of, I think, inspired by the Norwegian scene. A lot of these bands like Horner and Sargeist were influenced by, I think, bands such as Dark Throne and Gorgoroth. So you certainly hear that influence. But at the same time, it has its own Finnish spin on it. Like, the Finns just write these unique, bleak, emotive riffs, I think. Which is like, so, so do the Norwegians, but it's a distinct Finnish sound, I think. But anyway... If you like stuff such as Dark Throne, Gorgoroth, Ulva, Nathan's Madrigal, stuff like that, definitely check this out. Also Satanic War Master, you'll like it. Yeah, just really memorable melodies on this album, so that's great if you haven't heard it. Sargeist with Satanic Black Devotion. Alright, so with the albums I'm going to show, I'm not going to dwell on the music too long, maybe just give a quick summary, because the topic at hand is, of course, albums with bands on the front cover. So I'm just going to get straight into it, starting with the CDs. So the first album I'm going to show, this is Destruction with Sentence of Death. Okay, so I'm sure everyone's familiar with this band, a uh, German thrash metal band. This album came out in 84 and they were considered one of the pioneers of the Teutonic slash German thrash genre. Um, to be honest, if you know my musical taste, thrash isn't my number one genre, but I do of course like it, as you can see by the shirt. I do like a select amount of thrash bands and I'll also be honest, like. I've never been heavily into that Teutonic thrash scene. I've always found it, well, in the past, I found it a bit dry, to be honest, except um, in recent years, especially since coming over here and I bought some Creator albums, I've got more into it anyway, but um, especially after seeing that documentary about Creator and a handful of other bands, I've really got a lot more respect for that uh, German thrash scene. But anyway, look at this front cover. This is just fantastic. Like um, three guys all wearing matching black leather jackets, matching Pants, matching bullet belts, matching gauntlets, matching inverted crosses, matching frizzy hair. It's, it's awesome. Like, when I first saw this cover, I actually laughed. Like, this is when I was a lot younger. And over time, it actually grew on me. I thought, that's kind of cool that it's this kind of uniform look. But anyway, um, I do like this album quite a lot. Um, 
they were before my time because in 1984 I was only five years old so I don't think many five-year-olds listen to Destruction at least not back in the 80s so um, actually how I discovered this band was through my favorite black metal band Marduk so those who know Marduk will know that they did a cover of Total Disaster on the Glorification EP and also in the Live in Germania album so that's what piqued my interest and then I decided to buy this and like I really love the raw production on this it's fantastic and um yeah legendary band so i don't need to say much more but really iconic cool cover that's destruction with sentence of death on the this also includes the infernal overkill ep which is another legendary release by this band so yeah that's my first choice all right coming up next this is enslaved with Bloodhem. so uh this album this was the fourth was it the fourth yeah fourth full-length album by this band in my opinion this was the last like strictly speaking Viking metal album they did after that they became a bit progressive I think and that's not necessarily a bad thing but I will say that those albums Mardram and Monumention I did not like them at all and that actually put me off the band for a while I'm just being candidly honest it was the album Run that got me back into it where I felt like um, yeah it was like sort of hearkening back to the older stuff but that's just taste I'm not saying those albums are bad but like I just really not never got into Mardram and Monumention but of course if you watch my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of this band, and um, especially like uh, Frost, Eld, Viking, Eveldi, and this one. The first four, then, is classic albums, and uh, this one's no exception. That's got a really cool Viking theme, you know, like Grutler's holding the sword and they're standing on the rocks of the Viking ship out at sea. But yeah, this one is basically continuing in the same vein as the earlier albums, like uh, uh, sort of black metal, I suppose, mi mixed with Viking influences and uh, like. The, the raspy vocals juxtaposed with the clean singing it's very atmospheric with this one they sort of like um they made the production a bit chunkier and they sort of uh ramped up the aggression and speed i think but um still a lot of atmosphere on this album like it's great um of the first four this is the one that sort of it's obscured to me like uh but it always keeps me interested so favorite songs on this for me i'm not going to read the norwegian titles because i butcher them but favorite songs would be uh in chains until ragnarok Urgical Gods, uh, Bloodhem, so B Vengeance in Blood, and my absolute favourite track is An Eye for Mimir. Like, I love that song. That song is an eargasm. Listen to the uh, the clean vocals on that song and just the riffs. It's so incredibly catchy and when they have the chance at the end of it, fucking brilliant. Love it. So An Eye for Mimir, favourite track on the album. It also contains a track called uh, Soltung's Mead, which is like very Viking and folky, just so incredibly atmospheric. So. Great album and great group cover shot that's enslaved with Bloodhem. All right, coming up next. Now, this is one I've actually, I said, oh, by the way, I tried to make an effort to only show albums that I've never shown before. That is the case, so I'm not duplicating anything. I am gonna show one CD, which I did show as a background playing CD once before. That's Dismember with Pieces. The reason I'm doing that is because this is just such an iconic cover art, like the uh, five members of the band with their decapitated heads tied together by the hair yeah so um this is the indecent and obscene or, well this one actually it's indecent and obscene and pieces so let me just check oh that's right they because it's a, a split release so this is the indecent and obscene cover and um for those of you who are familiar with the band this is actually the artwork from pieces and by the way group shot on both sides both iconic by the way this is one of my favorite group cover shots for sure like just so iconic and atmospheric it's really good so um you may have heard that uh pieces was the first death metal album i ever heard or like it was an ep but back in the day i was 14 years old it was 1993 so it has a lot of meaning to me but anyway great iconic cover art group shot here on both sides so um with the, with the ones the album in question pieces like basically that whole ep is good pieces i wish you hell carnal tomb soon to be dead and the bonus track torn apart indecent and obscene was not one of my favorite dismember albums but it did have a few good tracks like uh some very good haunting dark tracks actually such as my favorites being fleshless skin father soul devourer and reborn and blasphemy like that melody the guitar melody and soul devourer like so so Swedish and Scandinavian and dark and haunting fucking brilliant so anyway yeah dismember with pieces okay up next is the shirt a hint 
<laughs> this is Metallica with Hardwired to Self Destruct. So uh, yeah, I thought this is an appropriate shirt to wear for the video because it is about bands on the album covers, but um, yeah, you see this is an interesting one, it's not a group pose, it's like the four heads melded together. Everyone is familiar with Metallica, so I don't need to say much. Uh, when this came out, I was really excited about it. I actually really like this album a lot. In my opinion, it's the best album they've done since the Black Album. So, I'm like a lot of diehard fans, I suppose. Like, I would say the first four albums are the best. Hey, come on. And um, I do like the Black Album, although it like was a slight change in direction. But then um, every album after that, I've always sound some found something worthwhile, with the exception of St. Anger. I agree with most people that that's garbage. <laughs> Sorry to say. Although even like St. Anger, I did like the movie documentary they made about that, Some Kind of Monster. So I really love that film. So the two songs on that, what are they? Uh, St. Anger, the title track, and Frantic, even though I don't think they're that, I don't enjoy those songs that much. They sort of remind me of the film, but yeah, St. Anger, forget about it. But um, like Load and Reload, I did like a few songs. Death Magnetic was pretty good, but I think this one was the best which came out after uh, the Black Album anyway. Okay, so um, everyone knows this, so I don't need to talk too much, but like my favorite tracks on this would be Hardwired, yeah, Hardwired and Murder One. Here Comes Revenge. The thing is, there are a lot of catchy songs in this album, which I wouldn't say are standout ones, but like every song you're singing along to. So as I said, when it first came out, I was really excited about this album. Over the years, it's sort of that further has declined a bit, except I still think it is a really good catchy album and it's definitely a return to form uh, by this band. Like uh, Murder One, absolutely the favourite track, you know, the tribute to Lemmy. Like it's such a great atmospheric song, it just shows when this band is in top form, they write really good quality songs. But anyway, Metallica with Hardwired to Self Destruct. Okay, coming up to the last CD then on the list. This is Six Feet Under with Warpath. Okay, so if you're not familiar, I'm sure you are. Six Feet Under was a band originally formed as a side project by Chris Barnes from Cannibal Corpse and Alan West from Obituary, but then it later became a full-blown band. Like, they left their respective bands and made this a full-time project. So the debut album, Haunted, it was a side project, and this is when they became a fully-fledged band. So it's somewhat of a supergroup. You have Chris Barnes on vocals, Alan West on guitar, and I'm just seeing who's who. Terry Butler from Massacre on bass and Greg Gall on drums. This was the lineup of the band for a long time, but I really like this album cover. The alternative one, they just show the skull and the six for Six Feet Under, but this one of them standing in the wood and everything, I just think it's a really atmospheric, cool cover. Really like it. I remember when this album came out in 1997, I was excited because I had already owned the album Haunted. This is one of my favourite death metal albums of all time, believe it or not. It, it takes me back to 1997 when I was at university. And at that time I even had the poster of this, like fucking awesome, like on the wall, massive size of this. I just think it's a great iconic group shot. As for the music, it's, you know, Haunted was like obituary music juxtaposed with Cannibal Corpse vocals, if you like. So like Alan West guitar style, Chris Barnes' vocal style. But on this album they actually went in a different direction, which was unique and original at the time for sure and um i really have a lot of respect for this band for what they did this is easily my favorite six feet under album what they did was they went for a lot of sort of more straightforward riffs and grooves and repetition repetition of the riffs repetition of even the lyrics and vocals and everything but it's fuck, it's so damn catchy and um i never get bored of this album never it, like it's like like every, every track is fantastic and actually the band that I was in back home, this was about 10 or 11 years ago, we never went anywhere, like didn't make a demo, just recorded some rough rehearsal tracks, but we were primarily inspired from by this album, by this band, sorry, especially this album and Haunted, so we started off by covering songs from this album, and then that started to lead us to write original songs, so it was very Warpath influenced, so this, uh, this means a lot to me, definitely. So favourite songs on this, like as I said, all 12 are great, but my favourites are Non-Existence, A Journey Into Darkness, uh, Animal Instinct, Burning Blood, that, that, that was our favourite song to perform. But like, that's the thing, it's still great to listen to as well. Also, uh, Manipulation, 420, Revenge of the Zombie, As I Die, that's about two thirds of the album there, but great album and great cover, that's Six Feet Under with Warpath. All right. Okay, how am I going for time? Not too bad. 
Right. So I'm gonna have a sip. Cheers. Here's to you. Nostrovia. Okay. So going into the records now. So we, again with the records, I tried to choose the most iconic ones. So I didn't pick each and every one, but just some ones I really like. So we'll just get straight into that. First one. This is Black and Blue with In Heat. So. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll see I, in the metal tag I talked about this band before. Black and Blue were a glam slash hair metal band from the 1980s, uh, from a, a US band, originally from Portland, Oregon, but then they moved to California, you know, where that whole sunset strip scene was happening. So, um, yeah, this was a band, unfortunately, they never really became famous. Um, they, they did get a record label with a record deal with Geffen, Except they never like broke through commercially, and as I've said before, it's a damn shame because they were a damn sight more talented than most hair metal bands out there. If you like glam metal, hair metal, and you have not heard this band, stop what you're doing. Well, not right now, but after this video, go and listen to this band. Any, any of those four albums from the 80s, they're all fucking brilliant. 10 out of 10 in my opinion. Black and Blue are my favorite hair metal band, and um, yeah, I stand by that. Probably uh, top three for me would be Black and Blue, Dokken and Rat. But yeah, Black and Blue definitely up the top. But um, yeah, nice iconic group shot here. Also a group shot on the back. Um, this band was, this album was produced by Gene Simmons as well. He produced this one and Nasty Nasty. And of course, incidentally on that note, um, where is he? The guitarist Tommy Thayer, he went on to become the lead guitarist of Kiss. So becoming the star child persona after Ace left the band and also lead vocalist Jamie St. James he was the one-time vocalist for Warrant because after Jamie Lane left the band they had several vocalists and he was ah oh, what was the album he was on Born Again I think but like Jamie St. James is a great vocalist as well so like somewhat they have sort of super group street bread but if you haven't heard this band just the music will speak for itself this this one like what was the album um Without Love, that was a bit poppy, but this is going back to Meat and, meat and Potatoes, Hard Rock. It's great. Some of my favorite songs on this would be Rock On, Heat It Up, Burn It Out, Suspicious, The Snake, Get Wise to the Rise, and my absolute favorite track, Great Guns of Fire. If you have three minutes to spare, listen to Great Guns of Fire. Awesome song. Yeah, so um, anything else? If, if you like bands such as Def Leppard, Motley Crue, 80s Kiss, Definitely check this out, you won't be disappointed. Also, I saw um, another channel I watch, uh, Todd Guy the Thrashing Zombie. He showed me this, he showed this in a uh, collection update the other day and it made my day. I was going, yeah, good on you, because I think this band is so underrated and more people should know about them. Um, so, yeah, definitely do that. Get Rise to the Wise and, <laughs> sorry, get Wise to the Rise and check out this band, Black and Blue. So that's Black and Blue with In Heat. Okay, so coming up to the next one. Here we have Europe with the final countdown. So this is interesting because the you might know that the traditional cover art is sort of like a cartoon picture of the heads of the band going up into space. But this is, I don't know, an alternative version or something. Actually, I saw, what reminded me of this, I saw uh, Brendan Von Doom in his video. He got another copy of this album with a, a band photo as well, but it was slightly different. So I thought, oh, that, that reminds me. Yeah, I'm, this is an alternative version. I bought this in Thailand a few years ago, secondhand. Um, yeah, kind of cheesy uh, album cover, but like, I think it's unique, you know, and I'm very much in sync with the 1980s. But uh, absolutely classic album. I really like Europe. Um, just um, really great music, very catchy, Swedish atmosphere, hard rock, feel good anthems, it's great. Everyone knows this, famous for the title track, The Final Countdown. My other favorite tracks, well, the other hit was Rock the Night, awesome song. Carrie is a good ballad. Some of my other favorites would be Danger on the Track, Cherokee, such an emotional song. Cherokee. Ah, oh, Time Has Come is a good ballad, and also Heart of Stone, yeah. Really, really great, fantastic 80s atmosphere. So if you, again, if you like sort of glam metal, hair metal, and you haven't heard this, what have you been doing? Go and check this out. Europe with the final countdown. Okay, so going for a slightly change of slight change of genre now. 
Okay, here we have Immortal with Diabolical Full Moon Mysticism. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I'm sorry about the glare on this. This is a really shiny cover. But, um, yeah, I, Immortal need no introduction. Classic Norwegian black metal band. One of the most famous and one of the most popular with good reason. I've been a fan of these guys for a very long time, since teen years. And, um, yeah, they've always just had a close place in my heart for this kind of music, fantastic. Now, if you're aware, for the first three albums, no, four, actually for most albums actually, apart from At The Heart Of Winter, it's always got the band members on the front, but I chose this one for two reasons. One, because it's my favorite album by Immortal, and also just look at that, it's so iconic and atmospheric. So this one was taken from some ancient ruins in Bergen, Norway, where they live, and I just love it, like the shadows, the fire breathing, the castle ruins, it suits the atmosphere of the album perfectly. On the back, you've got another group shot. Yep, very cool. Um, I'll show this in detail another time, but um, yeah, basically this is my favorite Immortal album because the atmosphere is just unmatched in my opinion. Like it's got this really murky production and it's actually the bass which is driving the music and the guitar's like an effect over the top, but just those like distorted echoey vocals and the clattery drumming and everything and like the icy keyboards in the background. It's just like, um second to none in terms of atmosphere. I just love this album. Can't say enough good things about it. And um, I'm not gonna go on about it because you probably know it already, but this is my favorite. Um, favorite songs on this for me would be Unholy Forces of Evil, Cold Winds of Funeral Dust, and A Perfect Vision of the Rising Northland, which is uh, like a dark, icy climax to this album. But like, all six tracks are fantastic. So, Immortal with Diabolical Full Moon Mysticism. Okay. Coming up to the next one then, how am I going for time? Okay, All right. You know I couldn't do a video about a group cover without showing some Kiss. So here we go, yes. So if you know me, you might be familiar that Kiss are my favorite band. Actually, it's quite hard to say because you know, like there's so many genres, I like so many like uh, hard rock, uh, heavy metal, death metal, black metal. But uh, so this is obviously my favorite hard rock band. And if I had to choose a single favorite band of all time, it would definitely be Kiss. So. Again, KISS, just like Immortal, the vast majority of albums in the 70s and 80s, with the exceptions of a couple, all feature the band on the front. And I do have my favourites, but I didn't want to show my favourite album for this because later on I plan to do a ranking of 70s and 80s KISS albums for those people who are interested. So I thought, I'll just, what, which one should I choose? I don't want to choose my favourite album because then I'm giving it away. So I just thought I'd choose the one where it all started. So this is their uh, self-titled album from 1973. As you can see, this is a second-hand copy, which is pretty beaten up, but it suits the retro vibe of this album. This is where it all started. Um, this album is just hit after hit, like some of their most famous songs on this, and I'll just tell you my favorites. They're mostly the hits as well. So you've got Strutter, Nothing to Lose, Firehouse, Cold Gin, Black Diamond, Fucking those five songs are just brilliant. And like the other ones are good too, but like you've got just like five smash hits there from this band and it's awesome. The only thing about this album was the production wasn't very good. Like it didn't really capture their, the energy of their music in the studio. It sounded a little bit slow and pedestrian, but like still, I love this album. It's got that raw 70s sound, very, very rock and roll. And um, like sort of invokes an atmosphere of New York and Queens. I can just picture being in that time. Like, it sounds strange, but yeah, yeah, I really like this album. Um, yeah, so this is, this has no frills or anything. Interestingly, you see this cover here. So this was the makeup, it kind of evolved. Uh, Peeper, his makeup, he was the cat man. You can see here, he looks, as Paul said, more like a tribal lion, because they actually, for this album, they didn't do their own makeup as they usually did. They got in some random guy, and yeah, he painted Peter a bit differently, so. Yeah, that's unique. Normally it's just the cat whiskers, you know? But anyway, I'm not gonna preach to the converted. I know some people don't like Kiss, but I, I love them. But this album is an absolute must if you've never heard them. So that's Kiss with their self-titled debut album. All right. Okay. Coming up with some change again. Another change in genre. I really like this album. It's a very iconic cover art. Nirvana with Bleach. Look at that, that is such a cool album cover. I really like it. The black and white negative photo. And it's quite funny actually, because you look at this. This has four members here. It looks more like a speed metal album cover. But um, I just love it, like the black and white negatives, the, the blurry Charles Peterson 
photo photography it's just such an iconic cover to a great album so like Nirvana again need no introduction they were what journalists called grunge but the band that was like a, a label created by the media but um, they just considered themselves I suppose like rock or it evolved from garage rock or something but they exploded with Nevermind which is of course a great album and then yeah in fact they've never really released a bad album like In Utero was slightly disappointing but this was where it was really raw and gritty at the start and um, I think interesting fact about this band you may not know Earache Records you know that's a like death and grindcore label they were thinking about signing this band based on the heaviness of this album and I think there was something else yeah like um Although they never really openly admitted it, I think they subsequently did that they were actually fans of Metallica and so like, it sort of makes sense, this is a very heavy album, but just like with some raw gritty atmosphere and totally unique for its time and it's never really been done since, so great album, some of my favourite songs on this, it's famous for the hit About A Girl, which is of course a good song, but some of my personal favourites would be uh, Negative Creep, Scoff, with a do 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 great um, Big Cheese is another favourite, and my absolute favourite track on this is Paper Cuts, like very dark, very atmospheric, very dreamy, brilliant. If you haven't heard Paper Cuts, go and listen to that song, it's amazing. So anyway, great group shot cover, this is Nirvana with Bleach. Okay, alright, thirsty work. Alright. Now returning to some glam metal, another group cover shot. This is Rat with Dancing Undercover. Great group shot. I like, you know, the thin strip bars and everything. Just a really iconic uh, cover. So, again, Rat Need No Introduction, famous Sunset Strip uh, glam slash hair metal band from the 80s. Um, I think their first, this was their third full length album. I think like their first four albums are just fantastic. Even after that, they had some like, I've got the greatest hits when they went in a sort of more bluesy direction. They just write some really hooky, catchy songs. And um, if you saw my Love at First Listen video, the first album I heard was Out of the Cellar and thought it was awesome. And then I quickly snapped up like the next three albums. This one is a rare one which features them on the cover, but yeah, it's really cool. So you've got all of the original members there, including Robin Crosby, rest in peace. Um, some of my favorite song songs on this would be Dance. That was the single. Uh, the other single was Body Talk, which was also featured on in the Eddie Murphy film, The Golden Child. Qu quite thrashy, that song. You know, Body Talk. Really good. Um, other favourite songs I like, Looking for Love, Take a Chance, Enough is Enough, and also my absolute favourite track on the album, Slip of the Lip. So catchy. In fact, if you listen to that song, you know the, uh, the Judas Priest song, Love Zone? I think they might have ripped off the riff, or maybe it was coincidence, but Slip of the Lip came out first, but my favourite song on this album. Anyway, that's Rap with Dancing Undercover. Okay. So guys, not long to go, just two more. I appreciate your patience. Okay, now this is another color, iconic group cover shot. Twisted Sister with Under the Blade. Like, just look at that, that's, I think, one of the best group shots ever. And another group shot on the back, very cool, like, tough street scene. Yeah, awesome. So, um, Twisted Sister are probably most famous for their frontman, D. Snyder, you know, very charismatic person. I think he's a really hilarious guy, actually, but, like, uh, the whole band is just awesome. He was famous for, you know, challenging the PMRC in the 80s, like, everyone's seen that video, probably, but, like, if you just watch him in interviews, he's a very charismatic, funny guy, and their music is just awesome. I think it's just really honest, yeah, just honest, bare-bones, emotional music, and they were always very devoted to giving the fans the best show possible. Like, they didn't fuck around on stage. Like, they gave it everything, you know, so it was awesome. But um, it's quite funny. They were sort of lam lumped in with the glam metal category. And you can see why. Like, when you listen to songs like Maybe We're Not Gonna Take It or I Wanna Rock or The Price, that they are quite, quite glammy. Except on this album, you've got some really... It's, like, actually really aggressive, hard, heavy metal as well, which is just awesome. Like, some really great tracks on this some of my favorites would be Sin After Sin. Sin After Sin. That's so good. Shoot Him Down. Great catchy track. The title track, Under the Blade. Also Destroyer. Slow heavy track. Oh, I want to sing that song when I say the title. Also Tear It Loose. Fantastic. So like, um, raunchy, heavy, aggressive glam metal. Twisted Sister with Under the Blade. Okay. 
and actually quite a bit of glam in this video well not this one up band isn't technically glam it depends on how you look at it but last one to show for today this is wasp with their self-titled debut so i really like this group shot here it's kind of uh caveman tribal and primitive you know with the the burning lamps and the skulls and skeletons and everything also a group shot on the back incidentally but um yeah wasp this was another band like about i don't know seven or eight years ago through one of those facebook groups i just started i played the song animal fuck like a beast and thought wow this is actually really good i remember i had heard them when i was a bit younger and i said it kind of reminds me of a cross between motley Crue and metallica as in it's glam metal but it's also heavier and harder than that so um perfect combination they write some really hooky catchy songs like blackie lawless is a brilliant vocalist and frontman chris holmes was a brilliant guitarist the whole band was fucking great and like this album honestly it's all killer no filler so if you haven't checked out wasp start with this album i also really like the last command even inside the electric circus even though that some people saw that as a weaker album i still really like it but this album every track just slays and destroys so you've got i want to be somebody love machine l-o-v-e the flame bad b-a-d school days hellion sleeping in the fire wow that is such a great majestic atmospheric track sleeping in the fire like haunting power ballad so good uh, what else tormentor the torture never stops i named every track on the album with good reason but great iconic cover art there so that's wasp with their self-titled debut all right and believe it or not maybe to your relief <laughs> that's the end of this video so as i said these are not all of the group shots that i own in my collection i was just choosing my favorite and most iconic ones and i felt that none of these could be left out for that reason so i know mark said do about five you can make an hour long video mine's only been about half an hour so hopefully i haven't bored you too much but mark i'd just like to say it was a really great idea i had a lot of fun doing this i hope you come come up with some more ideas and uh guys i hope you enjoyed the video so if you did uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to leave me a like to show me some support. I'd really appreciate it. And um, yeah, next video, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but if there's anything you'd like to see, uh, let me know. Suggestions are always welcomed. And um, that's it. So take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.